What I want to do in the next couple of minutes is really to get the excitement across that I have with level three. I'm Peter and I'm one of the instructors at IP Wave who teach level three and I really, really find it exciting and there is a lot of stuff that is in there that helps us really in our daily life. Our first topic was capacity. So what we do in this topic, first of all, we look a bit at the theory of capacity. And some of you might say theory is boring, but it's always good to have a proper background when we talk about things so that we know what we're talking about. So after a short chapter about theory, we will see how we can dimension, for instance, a stadium for capacity. How many sectors is it that we really need to bring the capacity into the stadium and we don't run short. Once we have that, we will see how in IB Wave design we can model that and then close the loop to see whether our, our design really fulfills the capacity demand. So it's really from beginning to end so that in the end we can sign off and say, yes, we've got it. So that's capacity. The second one is MIMO. Similarly, in MIMO, we start off with theory. Why? Because there is different modes in MIMO. It's for different technologies. And again, it's good that we know what we're talking about. So that's the theory part. Then we will look at it in IB Wave Design. Because in IB Wave Design, we can model a MIMO system to get our bill of material right and all these things. So the value is really there. And if we know how to handle it properly, that helps a lot. Once we have seen how we model that, in IB Wave Design, we then look at what we call data throughput maps. You know what that is. And we also have that available for MIMO. And we will see in IB Wave Design how we handle all of that. So capacity, MIMO. Now we move on to the third topic of the level three course, which is stadium design in general. And you might ask why stadium design? Well, stadium, I would say, is one of the most complex venues, or maybe even the most complex venue at all, or in building. So this is why we picked a stadium. What we do here is, first of all, we look at how to create efficiently a 3D model of a stadium, because a stadium doesn't just consist out of horizontal surfaces and walls, but it also has the seating area which we model as an inclined surface. So we give you tips, hints, best practices, and we also practice how to do that in an efficient manner because time is money and we want to do that fast, but still accurate, accurate enough for us to use it because that's one of the key points. Once we have the 3D stuff, what we do is we look at what makes a stadium so special in terms of design. So we look at the different requirements, we look at coverage requirement, but also capacity requirements. So somehow we reuse what we did in chapter one when we talked about capacity. So once we have that, we look at sectorization because for sure we will need several sectors in a stadium to provide the capacity that is required. And we will see tips and tricks for sectorization. We will see what to look out, how to keep the overlap between sectors small, so that we keep the interference at a low, low level, because this is a key, key thing. So that pretty much covers the stadium aspect. Like I said, it's part of day one and part of day two. What we do also in day two is that we look at another, let's say, tricky environment to model, especially in 3D, which is tunnels. So we really give tricks, guidance as to how to model a tunnel in a very efficient way. And on top of that, what we do is we look at, let's say, design criteria or the design methodology to do a design for public safety. So we look into different aspects with radiating cables on both ends, train one direction, train two directions. So just to get an idea as to how this can be done efficiently, still meeting the requirements for the different technologies, public safety being one of them. So that covers the tunnel aspect. And after the tunnel aspect, we look into fiber modeling. Now you might ask, why fiber modeling? Well, if you look at the high-rise building with a substantial uh, area, if we want to cover that building with fiber optical equipment, we need to run a lot of fibers. And 
In that section with fiber modeling, we show you how to do that efficiently with one of our latest features that allows you to do what we call strands of a fiber. Therefore, again, reducing the time that is required to model everything in IB Wave. So that's a key thing. Once we're done with the fiber modeling, we switch to our next topic, which is Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, it's been on the market for a long, long time. And I would say most of us are more like the cellular designers and we live and we come from the cellular world, but more and more we see that cellular and Wi-Fi become one and we have headnets. So what we do in Wi-Fi, first of all, we look a bit what is the difference between Wi-Fi and cellular and what we have to look out for when we do Wi-Fi designs. Once we have that, we really come up with a, let me call it simple Wi-Fi design to get an idea as to how many access points we need. And on top of that, because in IB Wave Design, we have many maps, output maps as we call them, that are really dedicated and focused on Wi-Fi. And we go through these maps and first of all, we see where the value is and to understand where and how they can help us to come up with a good Wi-Fi design. So that's really wrapping up Wi-Fi. So once we have Wi-Fi, the last thing we do is we go through a, let me call it a practice exam. So it's really some time dedicated to the exam. We will do the exam later on, but this is really to make sure we're well prepared for our exam for level three, because there was a lot in these three days. And we just want to wrap it up, bring it back hot again, so that we're ready for the exam. I hope that this short video could help you to, or help to excite you. Probably you see my excitement. We've been having it for such a long time and I'm still excited because I really know there is so much good stuff in it. And if you go for it, I wish you a lot of fun. I'm sure you will have it. And for the exam, I wish you good luck. But knowing that you're already level one and level two certified, I'm pretty confident that you will make it for level three as well. Good luck. Bye.